Hello people, welcome to this channel and welcome to yet another video on Android application development. In this video, we are going to explore Room Persistence Library. We are going to explore all the four fundamental operations in Room Database. So without any delay, let's begin and let's bring that intro in. There are three important aspects in Room Persistence Library. The three main components which needs to be implemented are Entities, Database and Database Access Object. The Entities will be defined for table name or the fields inside those tables. The Database Access Object will be an interface in which we are going to insert functions for all those operations or, or the data manipulation that we do in our database and the Database class will be an abstract class which will have the database name and actually create create the database in our form so before that we need to add a dependency here in build.gradle go ahead and insert implementation android dot uh, persistence dot room colon runtime colon 1.1.0 also annotation processor android dot r dot persistence dot room colon compiler colon 1.1.0 now build this or synchronize this so now for three main components that I stated, we are going to build three separate classes for them. So first of all, let's create a package. This will be for database classes. So inside this, we'll first create our entity class. Let's name it user. So inside this user, let's first give an annotation here for entity. And this will have a table name. So this table name can be users and inside this we are going to have our components. So the first company is going to be private integer ID which will be a primary key and will be also auto generated that is auto increment. The next is going to be our private string name. So this will be our column called name and finally private string email and this will have a and this will also be a column whose name is going to be email like like we stated so now generate getters and setters for this so right click on it generate getters and setters select all of it and then press on ok so this is our entity class. Now after this, let's create an interface for our database access object. So again, Java class. Okay, database access interface. Let's change this type to interface and then create it. Again, we're going to give an annotation here of DAO which means database access object so inside this we are going to have functions for all four operations that we create read update and delete operation in our database so public void add user and this is going to be have a user object inside this and this function is going to be for insert similarly read public we're going to bring back data in list so list and user let's import this list okay let me name it read user and this is going to be sorry this is going to be a query annotation and the query is going to be select all from users so this is the second method Third method 
is going to be for update again public void update data user user so this is going to be for update and finally the delete public void delete data or delete user and we are again going to have a user here and this is going to, to have and this will have an annotation of delete okay this is complete too finally we will have our database class so let's name this app database and we are going to create an abstract class for this so we're going to make this class an abstract and then have a database name here so this will have a name this will have entities first of user dot class and also a version here so version is going to be one inside this we will have a public abstract method app database object sorry we will have to provide a return type here so this is going to be app database and database and app database object okay we are finally set here now we can begin working with our main activity okay i'm going to break this video into further more parts see you in the next video